Forrest has lost two of three and four of their last six. And you get a look at the Blue Devil place kicker, A.J. Reed, who handles the kickoffs here. Colin Wareham is the extra point and field goal guy, but A.J. Reed handles the kicks. And of course, for Wake Forest, the dangerous Greg Dortch is deep. And you gotta keep it out of his hands. Well, it's good to see Dortch back there. There was yep. a question that he may not go. Alex Bachman is also back. And the 99th meeting, Duke has won five of the last six. It snapped a weight streak from 2000 to 2011 when the Deacons won 12 in a row. And here is Dortch, or Bachman, beg your pardon, and he'll reach the 25. And that's where we'll get our first look at Graham, North Carolina's Jamie Newman. 6'4", 230-pound redshirt sophomore who plays in his eighth career game today. And James, he kind of stunned the ACC with his performance, especially in the second half in the win at NC State. Yeah, it came out flying a big upset win for Wake Forest, but then kind of came back down to reality a little bit in the game last weekend, the loss to Pitt. Mentally, he was there, but physically, he missed a lot of those throws. He's got to be on point today. Here's Newman, and this is what he does best. Picks up about four on the run. Jordan Hayes makes the stop. One of those three safeties in the secondary for the Blue Devils. Well, not necessarily the what he does best. They don't want to run him like they have some of the other guys in the past, Wolford and Hinton, of course, but they can run him when they need to. Here's a runner. Yep, Cade Carney, a first down for the Deacons. Out to the 40-yard line. Run of 10 for Carney. Tackle made by the linebacker Brandon Hill, who missed the second half of the Clemson game with a targeting call last week. Over the ball in a hurry, maybe not quite as fast as this offense has gone earlier in the year because of all the injuries. They want to rest those defenders. Downfield, Dorch in the clear for the catch. Leonard Johnson makes the hit, but Wake is on the run here. And James with the 27-yard throw. The Deacons are in a little bit of a no-hurry or a hurry-up mode here. Well, absolutely. When the defense hasn't been out there yet, you don't have to rest them. Here's so, Carney. Quick on the draw once again. And, and finally, Duke stiffens a little bit. But here's another look at that Dorch pass. What you're not seeing right here is Jamie Newman having all the time in the world. And Dorch, you give him some time, it's a simple little slant route, and post route is going to get open. Well, they take down Carney again. Jordan Hayes crashing down. First Blue Devil on the attack. Third and long coming up for the Deacons here. The last four games for this Duke defense, opponents are just 31% on third down. Carney on the sweep. First down and more as he gets banged out of bounds just inside the 23. Impressive start for Dave Clawson's team. Well, you know, here you've got a third down and long, and you hand it off to Carney. And, and again, good vision and good patience. Wait for that end to collapse. Here's Dorch. Wanted to throw, and now will try and create on his own. Inside the 20. How about that? First down and 10 for the Deacons at the 12 on an 11-yard run by Dorch and James. It looked like a pass. Everything is clicking. They, they get him with the misdirection here. Everybody flying the other way. And, and take a look at my man Ben Humphreys, the linebacker. He's trying to go, but he's injured. And there is Newman chopped down by Hayes again in the secondary. And the Deacons' 49th possession in the CPI security red zone. They have 26 touchdowns, 13 field goals, but they're 10th in red zone conversion. Second down. Carney, touchdown, Wake Forest. The Deeks march the field on the opening drive, and Carney punches in his seventh score of the year. Wow, just like two years ago in the 24-14 Wake win, it was all Carney then, especially in the second half. And here, right from the giddy-up, Big 36 is punching it in. An impressive opening drive and the tempo that this Wake staff 
really prefers to go with, but it'll be interesting to see how much of that tempo we see throughout the day when the defense gets out there. Five-yard run. And the point after from Skiba is good. So Cade Carney helps lead the way to an early 7 0 lead. There's Ben Humphreys, Jonathan Lloyd all taking their final bow at Wallace Wade Outdoor Stadium here today in Durham. And well, the Blue Devils hosting and find themselves trailing 7 0. Deion Jackson will take the kick. On Duke's first possession. And he will push it to the 26 and a half yard line, and Rebecca joins us again. Hey there, Wes. Well, you mentioned how tough this season has been for both teams on the injury front. Well, today you saw Ben Humphreys, Duke, getting one of its best linebackers back in the lineup. However, top tackler Joe Giles Harris is not healthy enough to play today. For Wake Forest, we saw Greg Dorch out there. He's back to play today. We saw how dangerous he can be. However, senior running back Matt Colburn is not healthy enough to go, guys. All right, thanks. And here is TJ Ramming. A little power sweep into the boundary. You know, just to take it a step further with Ben Humphreys, the, the poor guy, we saw him, Rebecca, talking about how he's back out there. He's trying to go, trying yeah. the operative word, because watched him on that, that opening drive, and he's, he's hobbled quite a bit. But he's a fighter, and he's going to do everything he can to stay out there. But that knee's been an issue. Here's Jackson again. Ball popped loose. Boy, got caromed right out of bounds on the hit by Cameron Glenn, the safety. He dropped the hammer on Jackson and punched it right out, but it was enough, I think, to get the first down. This, this start, Wes, this, this uninspired start for Duke, you know, Dave Cutcliffe, he, he told us yesterday, Coach Cut said, we have everything to play for. People yep. think, oh, they're playing for a bowl game and we're not, we're not gonna be as motivated. Well, right now, Duke defensively and, and, and letting the ball pop out there, they need to play a little bit sharper and, and, and more physical. Taylor was the intended receiver on Jones' first pass, and there is David Cutcliffe. Just another look at that RPO look. And there's the route. How about the big touchdown two weeks ago, early in the game for Chris Taylor? Jones tried to keep it, and Wake stayed home, and it looked like Basham. Boogie Basham gets the tackle behind the line here. Boogie is back. Watch him right here, number 18, just going to get off the spot. And, you know, he's reading off of him, Daniel Jones, but, but I guess hoping that Basham will take that back. Instead, he picks the right guy with the ball and goes and drops him, and now it's a third down and 13. But Deke's glad to have Boogie Basham back out there. Well, keep an eye on Daniel Helm, the tight end. Jones moving around the pocket. Deacons are there, and Basham makes another play. And a flag has been thrown from over in front of the Deacon bench. And I think preliminary indication is a hold on the Blue Devils. Trey Blake, our referee. Holding. Offense, number 25. That penalty is the climb. It was all the plays fourth down. Oh, we got the... Basham just driving it inside, lined up the defensive end inside is almost like a two or three technique in there, James. Austin Parker will punt. Greg Dortch waits. Wobbly kick in the misty rain, and Dortch at the 19, and the Blue Devils had him corralled, and Dortch slipped out of there. He's going to pick up about six or seven yards on the return. 45-yard punt. Greg Dortch made something out of nothing there. Boy, you got an edit button on that thing? Boy, would they like to get a piece of that bowl game, but they've got to edit together this defense with all these injuries. Wake Forest, just make it happen. And for Duke, brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got to hug. Brothers got to wrap up. Play together. Play as a team. They got to wrap up and hug, though, if they want to stop this Carney train. Here goes Kate Carney down the far sideline and out of bounds in Blue Devil territory near the 40-yard line. Michael Carter, the corner, after 34 yards, shoved him out. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, Wes, it, you, you hear it when David Cutcliffe says, hey, we've got a lot to play for. We got a chance to win eight and then nine in the bowl game this year. That's big. But right now, 
the team that wants it more coming into senior day here in Durham is the team from Winston-Salem. And Cade Carney's running the show. Little mess point again. Here's Carney trying to find that spot. And James, I've been fascinated this week as we get ready for the game, how Wake Forest just kind of rides the back into the gap. Newman makes the late call on the mesh, and they just waddle their way through, muddle their way through, if you will. It's, it's, you really have to have great patience as a back and, and great vision as well. Here's Newman trying to find something on the quarterback keep, and not a lot there. Duke turned him right back. Blue Devils got Drew Jordan, the freshman from Swanee, Georgia, in the mix. Up at the defensive end spot along with Brandon Hill and Kobe Kwanzaa. They're playing because now we told you Joe Giles Harris couldn't go. Ben Humphreys was shaken up, and he's probably not anywhere near 100% now. Another third and long. Same play. Carney, a nice two top tackle by Kwanzaa. The junior who was lost to some foot surgery back in October has done a really nice job since these injuries have depleted the Blue Devils in the linebacking core. They go the same play that they converted last time on third down and long, but this time Kwanz is there, takes the right angle and chops down Carney for a loss of one. So they get off the field and get back to what they've really been doing best defensively on third down. They've been special the last few weeks. So a nice stop for the Blue Devils defensively. 7-0 Wake Forest. And here is Maggio to punt. Trying to flip it over toward T.J. Randall. Signals four and makes the pair of catch just outside the 10-yard line. 29-yard punt by Maggio and Daniel Jones and the Blue Devils will come back out there now. And Wake Forest ran just five plays and then punted in their first possession here this afternoon. The Deacons. Defensively, Carlos Basham was big in that opening possession. And this is a group dead last in total defensive numbers, James. Well, just all kinds of banged up. They fired a defensive coordinator right after the Notre Dame loss early in the season. Lyle Hemphill has been drinking from the fire hose, if you will, ever since. But he's got him playing hard in different spots here today. Deion Jackson, a fumble. And they scramble for it at the 16. I think Wake Forest has it, and they do. Demetrius Kemp banged it out of there for the Deacons. Yabari covers it up. Demetrius Kemp is a senior. A bad ankle. They weren't sure that he could even go today. Didn't practice earlier in the week. Puts his head right on the ball. And guys swarming it with those gold bonnets on. And Wake Forest with a huge turnover. <laughs> early in this one. It's great to see Kemp back out there. A couple of these linebackers in this game. We talked about Ben Humphreys, the senior for Duke banged up. And Kemp as well playing on a bad ankle. So from the Duke 17. And this is Christian Beal Smith, the redshirt freshman from East Forsyth High School in Winston-Salem. He'll pick up a yard. So we went to mentioned Matt Colburn unable to go and there again is the patience whether it's Carney or Bill Smith just the patience let it develop let those big guys run them out in front of you here's Bill Smith again and a nice two top tackle by Brandon Feenster playing in his final home game here at Wallace Wade Stadium Christian Beal Smith, five carries in the last three ball games coming into this one, James. We saw a couple bad angles early on, but here lately, the third down tackle by Kwanzaa, and that one by Feimster. Guys going and making it happen. Newman looks, boards the catch inside the five. Touchdown, Lake Forest. For the Deeks, Sam Hartman, just 6'1, 190, a freshman. Jamie Newman, on the other hand, 6'4, 230, able to stand in there strong. Let it develop, let it happen. Dorch, middle of the field as he takes a hit, lets it go, and Greg Dorch putting him on the board again. Steve for the point. 
And it's 14 nothing Lake Forest. Jamie Newman, touchdown pass number five. And Greg Dorch in the end zone. For eight, the ball is brought to you by Honda Generators. By Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless, North Carolina. And by your local Ford dealer. Well, Daniel Jones threw a touchdown pass to Britton Brown. And then another big play to Chris Taylor and Duke rallied to beat Wake and Winston last year, 31 to 23. Made the Blue Devils bowl eligible. Now they trailed at halftime of that ball game and they find themselves in the hole here. 14 to nothing to the Deacons in period number one. I was there, I got a shirt. Deion Jackson. The return for Duke. And Jackson kind of spins his way and turns his way to about the 30-yard line, and that's where the Blue Devils start, and here's how Wake's done it. Took it opening drive right down the throat of the Blue Devil defense for a touchdown, and then the second ball on the ground for Duke. This one ends up in the hands of Wake, and a few plays later, it's Newman to Dorch, and just like that, it's 14 to nothing for Dave Clawson's crew. Britton Brown, speaking of, Comes in the ball game now with Jones. <laughs> Jones gonna fire it for Lloyd downfield. He collided with Nasir Greer, but the ball was offline to the senior Jonathan Lloyd. Well, just by a step, and Jones gets the pressure, has to maybe let go of it a little bit earlier than he wanted to, and there's Greer at his safety spot. Nasir Greer hoping that he can stay there and not have to play outside linebacker due to injuries to that. Ramming ran out of room with Cameron Glenn chasing him. So now all of a sudden third and long coming up for the Blue Devils. Been kind of a sluggish start for Duke offensively and to a degree James on defense as well. Well, it, the, the bright spot for the offense in the Clemson game was early on they played well. They finished on the low note. Need to pick it back up here and stay on the field. Help the defense out. Here's Jones. Quick shot. And that's Helm, the tight end, for the first down. Across the 40 goes Daniel Helm. Sternad, the linebacker, the tackle for Wake Forest. Now, uh, here's Helm can do it all. And the senior using that big body as the pressure is there on Jones. Still able to stand in strong and let go of it. And see Helm just walling off the defender. And then making sure he uses that big physical body to get that first down. Jones tried to fire it to Ramon. Boy, Wake Forest was right in there with Carlos Basham again. That redshirt sophomore is really getting to Daniel Jones. Well, you got to fear the run. If, if you don't fear the run, you're not going to worry about it too much. And then unable to run the football so far early in this game is Duke. And they've been in the lap of Daniel Jones time after time. The big guys up front, this offensive line combination has started now five games in a row. They got to get after it. Trying to find a seam is Brown. And not much there. And all of a sudden, it's third and the full 10. Yarbury, who recovered the fumble a moment ago on the punch out by Kim. Big 94. Or 48, rather, was the first guy in there. Third and the full 10. Jones shoots it off the hands of the intended receiver, Phil Yaw Johnson. That's probably a ball that the redshirt freshman from Pensacola should have caught, James. Well, without a doubt. It, you know, it's unfortunately the last time for Duke that we were here, Wes, against Virginia. Way too many drops. You know, it, a nice play call. Set him down right in the middle of that zone, right at the sticks. You just got to finish it off. Good strong ball by Jones. All for not. Six plays in the punt now for Dorch. Fall to the turf right around the 20 yard line. Let's check with Rebecca Capel. Wes, a tough day for the Duke defense, and coaches are letting them hear it, reminding them, hey, it's 14 0 already. They're just not happy with the effort that that group is giving them and saying, you know what, we've got to communicate, but more than that, you just have to want this. Obviously, they need to stop the bleeding right here. Well, the stats reflected Wake's already got 125 yards of total offense. Duke with just 25. 
But James, the thing that the Deacons had kind of gotten away from in the last couple of weeks in the Jamie Newman administration, if you will, the tempo has been their friend. Ironically, here in these first couple of possessions as Carney goes back to work, and here's Kate Carney loose for 15 and a first down. I don't know what it is about this facility, but Kate Carney really plays well here. Well, I think it's the conditions as well. He's a mutter, you know, <laughs> he's just out there, and it just, it seems like it's the perfect scenario for him to just run the show, and he certainly has done it so far, and a good job up front by the line. Nine for 74 and then the throw off the hands of the tight end, Brandon Chassis. The tight end, it snuck right down the seam. Jamie Newman had started by hitting those open receivers, and here's one that he misses. And this was the problem against Pitt last week. He leads him a little bit, at least puts it on the money, and Carney's going to come down with it. And there's a look at the sidelines right now. Ben Humphreys is continuing to fight that, that knee injury that he suffered in the Virginia game. Here's Carney. Picking the seam again, and Kay Carney, another first down. A dozen on the carry for Carney. Lummy Young, who played very well last week, in relief of Dylan Singleton, makes the play. Great job again by the guys up front. Anderson, Osterhey, Gillum, Haynes, and Benzinger. Newman in a slot, Dorch. And the vertical game being their friend in terms of running. The stuff out in the flat is covered up pretty well by the Blue Devils. Third catch already for Dorch, including a touchdown. Well, again, you got to keep them honest. The one thing that they haven't had a lot of success with is, is trying to beat Duke to the edge. Duke has done a good job in matching them and getting out there, but right up the gut, they have no answer. Newman trying to read the block in front. Brandon Hill is there. So is Trayvon McSwain. It's a whole different guy trying to run the ball with Jamie Newman as opposed to Sam Hartman, Bates. Oh, John Walford. I mean, we oh, got so used to that yeah. watching that. It was, you know, third down and whatever, Walford's going to find a way to convert. Jamie Newman can run. He, he's not a bad runner. He's just more of a thrower. He'll cut it loose here. Darts makes the catch. First down, Wake Forest to the Blue Devil 36. 14 yards. That was a rope right there, Bates. Yeah. And pardon the pun, and, 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 Dortch will, and Dortch will get you turned. I mean, that's that's tough one-on-one -on -one coverage right there. But Duke needs to wake up. Mm. They need to wake up. It, it's You know, it, it's like they've been sleepwalking into this first quarter. And Wake, on the other hand, he's playing fired up. Newman, and that ball hit the turf, and a flag has been thrown in the area of the route Dortch ran, but also Alex Bachman, who was on the backside of it. And referee Trey Blake will visit with us. Holding. Defense. Number 26. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Michael Carter. Sidelined some of this season with an injury. See him up there, top of the screen. Just he, he's got to hold his head, which has never lets go, too. In fact, he steered Bachman into Dorch. That was a, like a double rub. Mm -hmm. First down. Where you go? Good look at Jamie Newman. And now he'll keep it. There's the pitch, Beal Smith. Inside the 25. Let's call it a gain of three. Second and about seven coming up. Dave Clawson, 51-year-old native, Youngstown, New York, graduated from Williams College. 26 wins at Wake Forest, 116 in a 19-season coaching career. Here's Dorch out in space. Oh, he'll make you miss now. Finally thrown out of bounds by Waters, the bandit safety. Well, they get Dorch out there in this set, and this is one thing that we talked about yesterday. This is a tendency. They're trying to get him that screen, and, you know, both these schools, you got to be pretty smart to go to Wake and got to be pretty smart to go to Duke. you got to recognize that, that all that watching the tape come into play. Here's Newman. And the first guy other than Dortch to make a catch is Scotty Washington. And that'll be enough for a first down to the 14. They go trips right here in the middle is Washington. And, and again, they, they get them bunched up. Guys trying to fight through the garbage to just cover. There's a couple of yards on Beal Smith's carry. Tackle made by Chris Rump. 
You're watching. Look at Newman trying okay. to go get involved, put his shoulder hey. down. <laughs> hey, okay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Big man. Here's Newman now, the quick snap. And he just, now remember, this kid is six feet four, 230 pounds. He could take some Royal Blue ride with him. And he took a couple Blue Devils there. James, I'm fascinated how the quarterback change changed Wake Forest. Yeah. Well, the, the injuries as well. You know, that that's it's almost oranges and apples when you look at it because they've, they've changed the offense to help out the decimated defense. Just give those young guys some breaks. 11th play on the blitz for Washington. Touchdown. Oh, my God. Brandon Hill got there. So did Lummi Young and Newman hung in there to deliver it to Washington for the touchdown, his third TD catch of the year. How about Jamie Newman? They bring the house. Here comes everybody, Scott free Newman knows he's going to get lit up, takes a shot, but in there just enough to lay it out there for Washington in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the blitz in the end zone. And bam, 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 still in the first quarter, about to be 21 to nothing. Demon Deeks. How about that? Skiba to the point. And Wake Forest has touchdowns in three of their first four possessions. Here's another look at it. He knows. They, they showed before the snap came. Jamie Newman, see them all walking up in those gaps. They're coming, and they're coming hard. He knows he's going to take the shot. He gives this guy a chance, and you know what? Washington gives his quarterback a chance because he's got some padding over there on the sidelines. And the training staff that's been plenty busy this season for Wake Forest tending to Greg Dorch's left hand. 12 plays, 80 yards, just under four minutes. Jamie Newman is seven of his first eight, James, for 76 yards and two touchdowns. Well, talking with Warren Ruggiero, his offensive coordinator yesterday, he said he came out in NC State and he played with a chip on his shoulder. He came and he, and he made all those throws. And it was almost like you, dumb luck. You know, hey, here I am. Let me just go and do what I do. But then he, when he had a week to really think about it right. uh, against Pitt, he missed a lot of those open throws and was off. Seems like he's only been off, if I remember correctly, on one throw here today. Here's Deion Jackson off the kick of Ford. And look out. Wow. Deacons are down there in a hurry. Stephen Claude, the wide receiver here. Well, the physicality going from defense to special teams, you name it. If they're out there, they're out there to hit. <laughs> the Deeks want to go bowling. Hey, we don't, we don't worry about those injuries. They got Boogie Basham back from injury. He's been all in the backfield. And there's the big fumble caused by Kemp. And Randall on the first down play. Picks up the first. Out to the 32. Gain of 15 on the throw from Jones. And now Duke going to go tempo on the Deeks, James. Wake settling into a little 4-2-5 look here. And Jones tried to flip it back across. And that was Deion Jackson. And so the incomplete pass, but Duke right up on the football here. They will not change personnel, so Wake will have a hard time now changing as well. And harder for Wake when you've got young guys in there playing new spots. Nice, nice, and nice. The throw is caught Noah Gray. That'll be another Blue Devil first down. You know, 14 you, yards there. Sorry, Wes, you've got all these new faces, and, and when you've got a team that'll slow it down, you got a chance to look to the sideline. you got a chance to check with your teammate. But one thing that now that Zach Roper's done, hey, let's speed it up and let's not let them think. Jones resets and then tried to get a little and got stripped out of there. And Wake Forest had DJ Taylor pull it out. And here's Daniel Jones right back to work again. Good job reading those eyes, letting them come underneath in that zone coverage, picking it up and knocking away. Good defense. Trying to get it to Lloyd with blockers. He'll reroute to the outside, and he is corralled by Jasir Taylor. 
So it'll be third down and relatively short for Duke. Daniel Jones finds a rhythm in this tempo, I think, James. Well, that's, that's, that's a situation, though, where I'd like to see Jonathan Lloyd. You know what? Go get me four. Go get me a first down. Don't try to go get me 40 right now and make up 21 to nothing. Get me a first down. Quick throw, Jackson to catch. It is a first down inside Wake's 40 to the 30. Final play of the quarter there, and the Deacons in control here. Well, get out of bed and wake up. We're trying to go bowling. They come from Winston-Salem over to Durham, and Dave Clawson has his guys on fire in the first quarter. 21 to nothing. Okay, look. Under these we keep on my There's my man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Trivia question. Thank you, Daniel Jones. Three straight seasons of 2,000 yards or more. Who's the only Duke player to do so in four straight? James, we'll give you the answer coming up here in just a moment. There's a look at DJ. 36th career start today for Jones. In the gun. Wallaball ball to center gets it to him, and he'll take the shot on the backside, Deion Jackson. The Britton Brown injury opened the door, really, for Deion Jackson here, James, and I'd say he's taking full advantage. Yeah, absolutely, and he's a guy that you can you can spread out there, too. He's good as a receiver. In high school, he was a receiver until his senior year, so he has really good hands, and this is the empty set that I talked about in the open, and they've gone through quite a bit lately. Fits it in that time, the tight end Gray, another catch. Close to a first down. So here this drive, they go empty, they go tempo, and things are clicking here as they look for their first points early in the second quarter now. Second down and just a couple. And off the hands of Deion Jackson and complete. So third down for the Blue Devils. Yeah, it's, it's wet, but you know what? That's, they're used to it. They, they practice it in the rain. They practice it early in the morning, actually, here at Duke. And uh, Coach Ted, a couple weeks ago, was telling us about, you know, there's, there's always seemed to be a, a dew on the grass, a dew on the football. Hang on to it. Help them out. Here's Jackson working near side on the handoff. And going to be short. I believe Stranad, the linebacker, got him a yard shy. Well, you're already down three scores, and Duke's got to go for this. Good job by Sternad. The linebackers, they try to bring Jackson across on that jet sweep. 11th play of the drive. Copenhaver's in. Helm the tight end. So two tights for sure. Deion Jackson in the package as well. Wake makes some changes along the way. Jones tried to hand it. Daniel kept it. And falls forward. I think he got it. Zeke Rodney banged in, but boy, Wake was already in the backfield. Red was there. Chris Calhoun first guy. Look at this. Uh, immediately he took it Are you back kidding me? It. Yeah, he, in the belly of Jackson. Not only do they not lose it on the fumble, but presence of mind by Daniel Jones. <laughs> Take the game control and then lean forward. Wow. Hey, wouldn't Virginia like to have had a play like that last night at the end of the game? Tough fumble in overtime against Virginia Tech for Bryce Perkins. Here's Jones, and almost a great catch by Helm, who had to reach back. Sternad collided with him. But let's go back to this fourth down here, James. I don't think I've seen a quarterback rip it out right. like this. It was beyond mesh point. I'm going to need that back. He's got you. <laughs> hey, it'll work. Whatever it takes. <laughs> nice play there by Sternad to break up the ball there on first down. Oh, man. Well, there's two thoughts there. Here's the second down play. Jones wants to keep it and off the gun. Raekwon Boyette coaches the running backs for Duke, right? You always talk, talk ball security with uh -huh. running backs, right? Zach Roper's probably happy Daniel Jones has the strength to pull the ball. But boy, it's going to have a field day with Deion Jackson. Right. Well, you know, in the in the desire, there's a chance this might be Daniel Jones' last game here. Yep. That Wallace Wade Stadium. Jackson floats out in motion. Zip it out to him. Nice block ahead by Ramming, and Deion Jackson scores. Well, what a nice job by T.J. Ramming to set the edge, if you will. 
one for Deion Jackson. Absolutely. One thing that you cannot do is you can't make plays on the ground. You can't afford to get cut. Ramming, dropping the defender to the turf. And making it easy for Jackson, who's been quite the workhorse through the air on the ground here for Duke. So in three and a half minutes, Wake Forest surrenders 14 plays and 83 yards for Duke's first march. And the point by Wareham is good. Yeah, nice touchdown there, but first things first. How about the play on fourth down by Jones to keep him on the field? And the first points, big cut block by Ramming in the end zone. Like leather, skin is stronger when it... The ACC championship in Jacksonville over Georgia Tech. Later in the year, that was the first win in conference play for the Deacons. And here is Bachman on the return after the Duke touchdown. Alex Bachman fights upfield just shy of the 30. And that's where Jamie Newman gets started, Rebecca, for the Deeks. A couple of injury updates over here on the Wake sidelines. Christian Beale Smith, running back, he was just going through a concussion protocol to make sure he was okay. He got banged up on that last series, and the trainers gave us a thumbs up, so that's good news. For Greg Dorch, trainers have been working on his left hand, particularly that ring finger. Trainers say he may have dislocated it. They're not really sure just yet, but they're taping it up, and he's obviously out there ready to go. Well, both these institutions, incredible medical care. From an athletic training perspective, there's Carney. They finally got him bottled up for the first time today. In fact, a yard may be behind the line on Lummy Young's play. The folks at Wake Forest affiliated with Baptist Sports Medicine, it's amazing how what a job they do. Likewise, the folks here at Duke, of course. And look at the rally to the football there, James. Absolutely. This the way you would have liked to have seen them start. Let, let them, don't let them run yawn by as a linebacker. Let things develop in front of you. Don't get mixed up in that trash and run yourself out of place. Newman and threw a bounce pass out in the flat to Sage Surratt. And all of a sudden, third and long. I'm not sure if that one's tipped or not, but it's first chance. Surratt, yeah, well, maybe just slipped out of his hands because it went right down, looked like into the face mask of the defender. Yeah, McSwain. Here's third and 11. Newman in the pocket, and he'll be sacked. Digging in is Trey Hornbuckle. Quite an answer by the Blue Devils on defense there. 59's a hustler. He goes. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Look at him. They bring the pressure up the middle, the edges as well. You got to have, you can't have... Just one. You can't have two ends running up field. You got to have some push from the middle as well. There's a nice four man rush. And Hornbuckle, the junior, dropping Newman. And Matt Guerrero's defense getting off the field. Wobbly kick to Ramming. From the 35, hesitates. Now I want to bring it here to the near side. Looking for blockers. Midfield is shaking a step and out of bounds into Wake territory by about a yard or so at the 49. And all of a sudden, you feel like Duke's got a little bit of momentum. The sack by Big Hornbuckle. They get Newman on the ground back after this. This is Dell Cinema Technology with uninterrupted streaming for people. Uh, better than 2,000 yards. Who's the only Blue Devil to do it four times? Thaddeus Lewis, 2006 to 2009. Some people would have said Ben Bennett. Bates, that's who I would have said. Yeah, Thaddeus Lewis. Midfield start for Duke. Trying to get back in this. Wake got 21 in a row to start. First down throw, Deion Jackson. And practically five before Zeke Rodney came out of his inside technique spot on the fourth catch by Jackson. Oh, yeah, look at the stats on that last TD run. Just, 83 yards and 14 plays. Just moments ago, you were wondering if, if Duke was, <laughs> was even interested in this football game. Pressure coming. Jones hit as he cut it loose and complete. And it was Boogie Basham that got to Daniel Jones that time. 
Oh, DJ's flipping here a little bit. Well, and Boogie Basham, it shows you now why they wanted to get him back so bad. He's... Zeke Rodney pushed a Duke alignment into Jones. And that caused the knee kind of to flex a little bit. Here's the third down play, and through traffic and almost picked by Sternad. DJ Taylor was there, intended for Helm, and the Blue Devils have to punt. Boy, Sternad, the linebacker's been great in pass defense. And how about this ball? Threading in there. Not sure if it was Sternad or, or through the hands of Helm. Mm. Helm is getting back on track, but it was a little bit of a rough stretch for him with a couple drops. First three and out of the day for Duke. Parker has it jump out of bounds. And around the 15. Christmas trees at the Home Depot. Sonovas, and I mean from the mean streets of Advance, North Carolina, comes Kate Carney. Advancing the football, Kate Carney. Matt Colburn, a no-go. Rebecca showed you Christian Beale Smith, the backup to Cade Carney over there with concussion symptoms. He's back in the game right now, but Cade Carney's been all you need so far. Offense, number 74. Phil Haynes. Five-yard penalty. Redshirt senior from Raleigh. Veteran guy. Little miscue here by the big fella. No. Oh. <laughs> then take a seat, Phil. Hard to miss a big guy. And Phil Smith. Not much. Brandon Hill, the first Blue Devil there. Don't have to go far to find the big three for the Deeks here in this uh, first half, James. Oh, yeah, look at that. 85 yards on the ground by Carney. Dorch, of course, through the air. And Jamie Newman doing a good job of distributing the football. But false, false start put them in a little bit of a hole here. Newman, and that's Surratt working his way back up the near side. Spun out of the first would-be tackle. Ended up with eight yards, and it's third and manageable here for Wake. Well, this, this guy's going to be fun to watch over the next few years in Surratt. We, we showed you those three, but you know, when you really look at it, Bachman's an outstanding receiver. Yep. Talked about Dorch Surratt in Washington. You throw him in the mix. They, they've got some weapons to move it around to. Third down. Newman in trouble again. And Swain and Taj Rice. Taj Rice, a young freshman from Louisville that they're very excited about here in Durham. <laughs> Big 320-pounder, and again, look at the discipline. The ends getting upfield, but staying in their rush lanes. They're the defensive tackles. An excellent job here the last couple series. Rice this time putting the pressure on. But so many times you'll get guys freelancing. Let me go make this play on my own, yeah. and then it falls apart. Then you give a guy like Newman a chance to squirt out and go get a first down. Great discipline there by Guerrero's crew. Oh, still fired up when he got to the bench. Wake will get five here on an offside call, but still wouldn't give him a first down. It's a pretty good play. Dave Clawson may decline this. Because five yards would still make it fourth down and three. 52-yard punt from Maggio. And you see that the math being discussed here with Trey Blake. Yeah. He... Lock can go wrong on the punt. Offside. Defense, number two. That five-yard penalty we added on to the end of the kick. First down. There you have it. 8.41 to play first half. Clawson's team still in front by two scores. This is an AT&T. That's big news. Child. She has a younger brother named Eric, by the way. Courtney's a sophomore at Davidson. 
Now, here's the thing. Courtney is keeping a stopwatch, James, on Wake's defense in, or Wake's offense as they take the field here, right? Well, the stopwatch is used when the defense comes off the field. That's it. And he, she's to start it. Clawson wants his defense to get eight minutes of rest, real-time rest. Well, we got flags. This will give us a chance False to kind start. of... Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty, first down. All right, so yesterday in the meeting, Rebecca, <laughs> Courtney Clawson got given a job to do the stopwatch, right? Yeah, yeah, she did, and she's taking it very seriously, guys. I just checked in with her. She's got the watch. She's keeping a log of exactly how many minutes and seconds this defense is getting to rest, <laughs> although she says it's difficult in the rain because her paper is soaking wet, and she's a little afraid that it's not going to be sufficient. But so far, the defense is getting sufficient rest. Her shoes, however, are a problem. She's got her, her hot pink sneakers on. She left her rain boots in her dorm. She goes to Davidson College. College, uh, but she's she's you know she's getting through the day, getting through the day in the rain. All right, toughing it out, <laughs> studying history. <laughs> yeah, here at yeah. And there is Yarbury with the sack. A well-rested defense. How about that, guys? <laughs> wow, Yarbury, Boogie Basham. Nice little move to spin to come back underneath and turning it on up front. Lyle Hemphill's defense coming to hunt here today. Third and 21 now, chance to pin your ears back. And they're going to run with Deion Jackson here. And oh, Sternand and Masterson almost helping them to Courtney Clawson's lap over there <laughs> where she was standing. So very quietly, Duke goes three and out. And Courtney will start the watch. Oh, look at her eyes get big. She realized, oh, gosh, here oh, come. Oh, here they come. I got to hit the watch. <laughs> oh, that's fun. You know, we got to give a shout out to her high school history teacher, Betsy Overton, who, yeah. who was the inspiration for her to decide to uh, to major in history. Here's fun the punt. With them yesterday. Yeah, it was. Great time. And the Parker punt almost bounced back and hit Stephen Claude, number 88. And the punt unit, 40-yard punt. And how about our Toyota Tweet of the Week? Brought to you by Toyota. Oh, Dateline Lane Stadium, James. Oh, man. man Gerard Hewitt hard. of the Hokies. Wow. A little fire and a little yeah. shade at you know, the... Uh, and, well, and, and how about Alex Farmartino, our, our producer, just... You know, he, he's a Virginia grad. Takes him. Just go ahead, you know, 15 oh. years now. Just unbelievable. Here comes Newman. A little flash to Carney. Gain of three. Second and seven coming up. 34-31 yesterday. The Hokies won in overtime, Rebecca. Guys, another play with Newman and Carney. Here's the deal. They're roommates, so they have a lot of chemistry. And Jamie Newman told me this week that Kate Carney is just an excellent leader. That's why he is a captain on this team. And he said, if there's one thing he is good at, it is motivating men. And Carney spent the week saying nobody wants to start winter workouts on Monday. This is a playoff game, and he's kind of leading that charge out there today, guys. Wow. Playoff game. I like it. Two by three look for the Deeks on third down, and Newman going to keep it. And Jamie Newman will have the first down. They blow the whistle now. Their forward progress is going to be shy of the 45 with 6.45 to play in this first half. And I think Dave Clawson wants a better spot, and he may have a point here. I thought they whistled the play. We'll get another look at it here, James. This is all Jamie Newman. They blow him off the left side of the line, and then he's hit and carries for a couple yards. I, I don't, maybe the, the second push, but has the whistle already blown at that point? Initially, I don't think he got across that line. Jamie Newman. Mm. Look at here now, Wake Forest is scrambling guys away. And is Wake calling a timeout? I think they are. Timeout, Wake Forest, their first time timeout of half. It will be 30 seconds. Had to break the 45 for the first down. And listen now, listen for a whistle here. Yeah. 
Wow. Well, at that point, that ball, yeah, it looks like he has the first down. And they call the timeout, and I, I'm guessing more than anything, Dave Clawson wants to give him a chance to, to look at it. He didn't ask for a review, though. Mm. I don't know. I might. You know, you, the fact that you ended up wasting that time out, you almost wish you would have had the offense out there to try to draw them off sides, then call your time out. Maggio hangs it high, ramming a fair catch at the 22. Six minutes even to go. First half here at Wallace Wade Stadium. Wake Forest, who scored 21 points on touchdowns in three of their first four possessions saw Duke answer with a Daniel Jones touchdown to Deion Jackson and now all of a sudden after a three and out Duke was six minutes to go James got to find their offensive groove again Britton Brown's come in to work with Jones Duke will get the ball to start the second half Taylor was on a knee when he caught it at the 27. Be a gain of five. Nasir Greer was trailing. First catch of the day for the senior, Chris Taylor from Miramar, Florida. Taylor's got to go down to secure it. Ball thrown a little bit low, but whatever it takes to secure that football and, and hang on to it. There have been too many drops here, not just today, but throughout this season. Uh, these receivers at Duke. Jones cuts it loose, far side. Lloyd couldn't come back to it. Incomplete. Third down and about five to go. Well, that's back to back, a, a little bit off the mark. This one uncatchable for his receiver from Jones. So third down and five for Coach Cut's crew. Someone looking like a blitz coming here. He'll just bring three though. Jones steps up and tried to come back to ramming. Sternad, Sternad, the linebacker, and Nasir Greer were there. And this is three straight three and outs for the Blue Devils. Well, Wake was, was walking up like they were going to show blitz. They decided to just bring three with a bit of a spy, really, to make sure Daniel Jones doesn't do the damage on the ground. And trying to force it in there to ramming. And just quick like that, Hemp Hill's defense does a good job of getting off the field. Plenty of time for the offense to add to this lead. James, this game has featured six straight three and outs now. From the two schools. Dorch signals for the fair catch. Will do so with the 33. So how about the temperament? Fast start by Wake Forest. Duke answers the touchdown. And now all of a sudden, they're kind of squabbling back and forth on three and outs. Yeah, almost coming back down to earth a little bit. It's a, he had the counter punch from Duke. And you know, and you, you, at times there in the first half, now after that, that initial burst, you, you started to see now some of the, the depth and injuries come into play a little bit defensively for Wake Forest, but you're figuring it back out. Yep. The, the tempo is where they had their trouble, but you got to have success to, to get up back over that ball and, and keep it going. Play fake. Newman wants to take the shot. Dorch. Incomplete. Overthrown. Leonard Johnson was with him. So Jamie Newman, who hit seven of his first eight, misfires here. Let's watch Carney pass protection. Look at it. Whoa. Just chopping him down, doing it all. Oh. You, you better not miss, though. If you miss, you're going to get your quarterback splattered. So you got to make sure you, you get a piece of them and chop them down. And the junior does just that. That was Brandon Hill, the linebacker. Now Carney back on the ground. And he'll be pushed to the ground at the 34. When you played, were you ever mindful or fearful of a guy who you'd see on tape that week just take people out on that delayed blitz like a linebacker had there? With, with a cut block like that, it, when it happens full speed and you're used to 90% of the time you'll run into a guy and, you know, go to helmet to helmet, and then you, it's the last thing you're thinking of when you're going full speed, unless you're playing at Georgia Tech. And right. you're, yeah. but it's, and then he cuts you down. Boy, it, uh, it, it hurts. It hurts your pride, too. Newman, long throw. And beyond the reach of Poplin. Good coverage on back-to-back -back tries. 
here for Wake Forest and an excellent job this time in a, in a nicely thrown football really just off the hand of, of Bachman but it was Josh Blackwell that time stride for stride so another three and out seven in a row now in the ball game Maggio for ramming here TJ on the run, 27, re-clutches it. Now looking for something, there's a flag thrown. Look at TJ Ramming on senior day at home. And he'll be taken down inside the 40 at about the 37. Let's see if it stands. Usually you get a block in the back or a hold in these scenarios. Yeah, it's coming back. Trey Blake, the referee today, is assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference. You mentioned the bobble. Sometimes that bobble or, mm. or, or, or the, the miscue, it'll, it'll give a During chance the return, to develop. A legal block in the back on the return team, number seven. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Duke will take over then. There you have it right there coming from the left side. He, wow. Keiston Fuller, the I, wide receiver. You know, it's it's the body language that uh, you look guilty by throwing the hands yeah. up in the air all the time, and I don't even know that there was really much contact. It was probably the acting job or, or the poor acting job is, is what got the flag thrown, really, when you get down to it. And what a costly one here for this offense. They were going to have a shot. Jones tried to make the throw, and it's intercepted. Nasir Greer, touchdown. from Rex, Georgia. And here is Nick Skiba for the point. <laughs> I think we had some movement all around. False start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty. Replay the try. By the way, the... Defensive tackle Trayvon McSwain just threw a paw up there to slap that back as Zach Tom guilty of the procedure. <laughs> what a defensive play for Lyle Hempel's group. Well, Lyle Hempel just yesterday told us he's worried about Nasir Greer in his safety spot because he didn't get any reps at safety this week because of the injuries at outside linebacker. He had to try to learn a new position. Well, guess what Nasir just did. Well, and, and here he is out in the coverage. Here he is on the slot, man. He's just going to squat. He's just going to squat and watch the eyes of Jones. Daniel Jones throws it right to him. And that's an easy pick six for Nasir Greer, <laughs> a true freshman from Rex, Georgia, that his defensive coordinator loves him. He's tough. He's gritty. He's a football player, but he's, he's green, you know, and, and to try to learn a new position. He's, it's been a, a rough week for him, but he's got a lot of trust in him and paying off right here for Big 37 in this Demon Deacon defense. Wow. 20-yard interception return by Greer. A young guy who had seven tackles early in the year against Clemson, six at Florida State, six last week against Pittsburgh. Makes a play here. Darren Ford wow. will give it away. Just his story this week in visiting with uh, Lyle Hempel yesterday. You just find yourself give, it, give the kid a lot of credit. He's able to make a position change like Masterson did about a month ago. Get something here in the last four minutes, and Johnson pushes it to the 27 ninth possession of this first half for the Blue Devils coming up. And all of a sudden, seven and four Duke 
three and four in the ACC coming off the disappointing loss at Clemson where they played the Tigers tough James first 30 minutes last Saturday night and all of a sudden just having a hard time finding any momentum here today well a, a couple flashes of it but but the the consistency you, you get a little penalty a, a drop will be a drive killer it's just the way they approach this football game and spotted Wake 21 points as they kind of ease their way into it yep. you, you'd like to see them if you're a Duke fan get something going here before half Leon Jackson, nothing. And the Deacons starting to bring it here a little bit. No, it must be that stopwatch over there. They're fresh. They're getting all the rest, huh? <laughs> Just a lot of pads popping. Guys playing really hard. I mean, nobody wants to stay at home. Yep. And everyone else goes bowling. Oh, and this, my goodness, Jackson limping off the field here. Here's Brown. Fighting back near side and almost got out of Carlos Basham's reach. Got just enough to take him down. Third down coming up here as the rain continues to fall. Well, Brown looks pretty fresh, and that's good to see. He's, he's missed some time. It's been an ankle and a leg issue. There's a third and five. Big play for this defense. And Helm can't hang on to a ball shoulder high. Cameron Glenn knocked him down. Just ahead of three minutes to go. Let's get a check on the forecast, James. Here's Rebecca K. <laughs> you guys, thanks a lot. <laughs> it is just starting to rain pretty hard right now. It's been raining through the entire game, don't get me wrong, but it's been misting off and on. Now it is really coming down out here. Great, let's get a shot of this. It's really coming down out here, you guys. Uh, the ball is slippery. Referees tell me that they are trying to keep the ball fresh because it is slippery, and there's a lot of towels out here on the sidelines to try and keep this ball dry for the players. Microphone looks to be in excellent <laughs> yeah. condition, I might add. Well, and, and the ball slippery. You saw Helm, the senior tight end, with another drop. Duke thinks that ball was touched. And the Blue Devils say they have it at the 26-yard line. It's going to be awarded to Wake Forest, and Chris Taylor is injured. Let's see. Wow, it looked close. He you know, one thing, though, watch the body language of 29 there, DeAndre Delaney. Or is that Anthony Manning? I, there's two 29s, but it's... That's Delaney. It's Delaney. So, yep. you know, right there, I, I don't... <laughs> you're, 